Hello, hello, my favorite class, mis amigos. My only class. Ah, ¿Cómo es? My favorite class, my only class. Welcome to Monday. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Good evening, Max. How you doing, my friend? I'm fine. Nice to hear, nice to hear. Day one, week three. Raf, Rafael, how you doing? Can you hear me okay? I have faith he is there. He's connected, but. Yeah. It's all right, we'll wait a few minutes here. How's it going with the classes, Max? He's trying, he's trying. Oh, we hear you, we hear you. I hear you, Raf. I just finished section two and I'm about to start section, section three. All right, that's good for you. Hey, Max, are you currently working in a call center or are you doing something else? Yes. All right, we we heard a little oh, bit. Se oye como que tiene el, el ¿cómo se llaman esos sintonizadores, ¿cómo se llaman? Los auto tunes. Auto -tune. auto -tune. El auto tune. All right, no, teacher. Uh, I would like to work in a call center, but. I I don't feel like um, I can make it. I hear what you're saying. But now let me tell you that I used to do interviews for people coming in. Uh -huh. And if I were to interview you, Max, I would pass you to the next interview. Really? Yes, sir. Um, what, you, what you have to keep in mind is that a lot of a lot of that goes on in an interview is whether you can understand and bring a response you know if i tell you for example i had a dream with mermaids you know what what would be your response max <laughs> what did you smoke Right, right, exactly. So that tells me that you understood perfectly what was going on. So that's what's important, all right? Um, it's okay to talk slow. It's okay to have an accent. You just have to be able to respond. And so far, Max, you have been able to do it here. And so, uh, you know, nowadays there are, I, I, I believe there, there's a few call centers who are giving opportunities and you know there's uh, very little conversation uh because they they'll get you like 50 50 50 percent chat or 50 percent voice and then so that makes it a little bit better for you because you can actually rest a little bit but at the same time you get to practice and 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 my recommendation max is, is try to practice right the only way to practice is for you to talk and talk and talk to somebody um it doesn't matter if, if they tell you you know oh my god you have an accent it's okay you, it's okay to have an accent right give it i would max i would recommend for you to give it a shot man How can i think avoid our Rafael, how can you do? Jose, hello, welcome. It's really a bit that Rafael cannot connect. Yeah, I, I I heard a little bit, Raf. We heard a little bit of what you were saying. Daniela, hello. He's a fast speaker. And the internet, the internet cannot hold so you back, Rafael. We 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 catch like half of it and then we miss the second half, Raf. It will be a good practice to 
to be able to listen to Rafael. Oh, that it okay. So, very fast. Yeah. So what what you can do with the accent is called linking, and this is this is what this is the difference between us who have an accent and the gringos who don't have an accent. And so what they do is in a sentence, um, they overlap words and letters. Let me write some here. Let me see. I had a dream today by the Martin Luther King. I am. So what happens is that sometimes they talk so fast. Jarvin, hello, hello. Hello, sometimes, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Sometimes they talk so fast that what happens is that you can't really hear that accent or the accent turns a little bit different, you know? If um, you're not used to. Yeah, there we go. So let me give you an example. So here's the word, I had a dream today. Okay. okay. Now you can say I, and then you can follow it up with had, and then a or a, I had a, and then dream, and finally today, right? Now, usually what happens is that because we speak Spanish, the I, we are able to voice out. Porque tenemos bastantes palabras. I, I think that we have a lot of words that we can kind of use it, right? I, as in, you know, our eyes. Now, had is a word that's a little bit harder because the H for us is very new. And it's really hard for us to kind of learn to how to use it. You know, all of our lives, every time we saw an, a, an H, they told us, forget about it. Don't say it, right? It's silent. You're not supposed to say it. So the same thing happens when we're learning English. Even though we know that we're supposed to say the age, we don't because in our subconscious, you know, it's there and it's stopping us and it's telling us not to use it. So the word age is very problematic for us. However, what we can learn or we can focus on is trying to put together these words that are problematic, you know? And on top of that, we have to learn the linking aspect. So how does that work? Well, we have the word I, which is easy for us to use. Now we have our word had, which should be pronounced as if there was a J in Spanish, right? Had, had, como ha, 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 had. And then either A, sorry about that, either A or A. And then the D sound for us is also very problematic, right? Because we don't really use it that much. So D, Work on it as much as you can, and then dream, dream, dream. I I believe that that pronunciation with letter R, R is pretty difficult for us because gringos make it. Uh, they, it sounds like they pull the tongue they, to pronounce R. They R. And what happens is that they try not to. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed cuando un gringo quiere hablar español and he goes to a word that has an R. Have you guys noticed that they cannot use the R? They can't roll. They can't. They can't. Um, it, that's what it's called rolling the R. And they have a really, really hard time. George, hello, hello, welcome. Dennis, welcome. Hello. Josue, welcome. That's what I, I was trying to say, teacher, because it sounds like they pulled their tone in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, they, and we're not we're not used to do that with letter R. That is correct. Usually, like when we say perro. Yeah. Have you ever heard a gringo say perro? The perro. Yeah, they say pero, like because because in in the English language the R's you you don't roll the R's. It's just 
it, they try to do it as simple as possible. So dream, right? A dream. It should sound like more like a dream, like real short, to the point, no rolling. And so how does this come in to us and our accent? Well, the reason we have an accent is because we pronounce these words the way we would pronounce them, for example, in Spanish. And so that's where our accent comes from. Once we start pronouncing the words like the gringos, like an American would pronounce, then it sounds a little bit different. Uh, let me give you an example. And this, this one is easy for us, I think. The word is banana. Right? It, it sounds normal. Everybody uses it. Bueno, nosotros decimos guineo, right? Guineo. But when we try to talk uh, afuera, like when we try not to use guineo, we use banana. Pásame la banana, right? O toma la banana, comprame una banana. But when you hear a gringo say it, they say it differently. Who, who can help me by saying banana? Banana. There we go. That's it, Max. That's it. Banana. That's so, like so, the case of chocolate. That is the, yeah, yeah. Meteorite. That's correct. Meteorito. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so what happens is we start using Vanessa. Hello. Ay, que relax. Hello. Vanessa. Hello, <laughs> Vanessa. <laughs> Así que solo, como, como, y solo le hace falta el, el coquito y, y, y la cor... there. there we go, Marcel. Maricela. Um, yes, definitely. All right. Uh, welcome, welcome. We were talking about somebody raised a question about accents. Somebody raised a question about accents. And so what, what I was talking about is there's two ways to lose the accent. One of them is to pronounce, or the way you pronounce the words, and another one is called linking. Actually, linking is a little bit, you know, used a little bit more. And so we were, we were talking about the phrase, I had a dream today, and how to pronounce these. And so we started talking about words that, how can we make these words sound a little bit more American? And we started off with banana, right? And Max brought it up and he said, well, you say it banana. And, and that's correct. That's, that's how you say it in the American way. So there's another way. There's another way, right? Uh, somebody, I think somebody mentioned it here. I'm not really sure if it was here or in one of the classes. Okay. When you guys hear the word Santa Clarita, how does an American say it and how do we say it? Well, because we're Hispanic, right? Because we're Latinos. <laughs> we want to stick to those roots. Entonces, when it comes to saying these names, like, for example, uh, let's, say, let's say a city, right? Uh, Los Angeles. We usually, what we do is if we're, if we're talking to somebody and we want to let them know that we're Hispanic, we'll say, yeah, I'm from Los Angeles. Like with that, that, that Hispanic roots really come out, right? So the same thing happens with this city, Santa Clarita. Santa Clarita, we, we say it with an accent, but a gringo would not say it like that. A gringo would say Santa Clarita. Where do you live? I live in Santa Clarita. And then there it is, there, there goes the accent. There is no accent, even though it's a Hispanic word, it's a Spanish word. Santa Clarita, and that's how they can tell you. Si te agarra la migra y te pregunta de dónde sos, right? And they bring something like Santa Clarita, just say Santa Clarita, man. I'm from Santa Clarita. Yeah. Y te van a dejar ir. Pase, por favor, please, please, keep going, right? And so the other words was banana. Like, hey, can you get me a banana, please? Right? Way different than you saying, hey, can you get me a banana, <laughs> please? Right there, there's a there's a slight difference between saying banana and saying banana, or saying Santa Clarita or saying Santa Clarita. So Raf, the more you learn how to pronounce these words in the least Hispanic way, the more you will be comfortable with saying them, and the more you will sound 
fluent and you start to lose that accent. Now, the second portion is the linking. I had a dream today. So what happens is they unite all of these words. They put them together. I had a. And then dream. And then today. Really close to each other. And they try not to pronounce certain, certain, certain syllables, certain letters. I had a dream today. 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 Try not to pronounce the T-O today. Like if you were to say it by itself, it's a, you, you're supposed to say it today. But once you're in a phrase, once you are having a conversation, once you're reading, you know, to, uh, to in a public place, it changes. I had a dream today. And so linking becomes, I don't want to say that it becomes a problem, but it, it is actually, it's part of actual conversation. Everyday American English takes a huge chunk of linking and hopefully we can get to see it you know, uh, a few modules ahead, because there is a lot of words that you guys need to start linking together to make sure that your um, that your that your fluency increases and you start to sound a little bit more, you know, more in rhythm with the way Americans talk. So, so keep that in mind. So, uh, hopefully, hopefully we can get to see that, Raf. But the more you practice pronunciation and the more you practice linking, the better it will be for your accent. Now, Raf, my recommendation is always keep a little bit of your accent. ¿verdad? Porque sos latino, papá. Sos latino. So keep a little bit. ¿verdad? De repente decir Los Angeles and then let them know that you're Hispanic. Feel proud. <laughs> All right. All right, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to class. Oh, my goodness. Let's see, let's go and get started. Let me go ahead and share with you guys. Here we go. How are we doing with the platform work? How is everybody doing? Oh, everybody has a problem with Florida. Especialmente porque salió un rapper que se llamaba Flo Rida. ¿No se acuerdan ustedes de ese? Era Flo y escribía Rida. Flo Rida. Entonces, it confused everybody. Now, you can be very Hispanic, Vanessa. Right? You can be very Hispanic and you can say Florida. <laughs> and you'll sound very Spanish. Very, very Spanish. Or you can say Florida. Florida. I don't even know how that sounds. Florida. I see. Yeah. Like Florida. 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 Rav, the, the platform. Way to go, sir. Way to go. Vanessa, le arreglamos, le arreglamos su acceso a la plataforma. Tenía problemas, Vanessa, su plataforma o no? No era usted? No. No, teacher. Oh. Okay, no. okay, no, never mind, never mind, never mind, then. never mind. Okay, uh, with the platform, guys, remember, uh, February 10th is documents, and then February 18th, we complete the module. Complete the module. So keep that in mind. In our class, we had already gone over sections one, two, and I think, I don't know why I don't see the green parts, but I should, I should be able to see some of the green ones. And we left off in section number three, and we're gonna cut it into pieces and see how that works. We were having a lot of problems on Thursday with my internet. Do you guys remember that? It was really bad. So I wanted to apologize for you guys on that. Um, I called Tigo, I escalated the issue. They didn't do anything for me, but, you know, magically today, uh, the internet has been working okay. So real happy about that. 
Okay, all right. This is where we have our introductory video and 3.3. Let me see, let me go back to 3.0. And here we started to see what happened and there was a conversation that we were having or it was a conversation that we had to listen to and we had to identify what had happened, all right? Once we finished the video, we were able to move to the next lesson, which was past models for degrees of certainty. And this one we did not get to see. So we're gonna go ahead and review this one and then we're gonna stop it and review it and then move forward with it. Okay, let me go back here a little bit. I think, I don't remember if I did, the, yeah, sharing the sound. So here we go, let me go ahead and share the sound and let me go ahead and share the video. Here's the video, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Certainty. good one. Stay and find out what this is about. Past modals for degrees of certainty. It's almost certain. She must have left already. She must not have turned on her cell phone. It's not possible. She couldn't have been at home. It's possible. She may have forgotten the time. She might have forgotten the time. She may not have remembered the time. She might not have remembered the time. Her car could have broken down. Past models for certainty. We may use must or couldn't have. We use must or must not have when we are almost certain. We may also use couldn't have if it's not possible. Past models of possibility. We may use may, might, or could have. So remember, we may use may, might, and could when something is possible, but we don't know for sure. When you want to use may, might, or could have, this is what you should follow. Subject plus may or might or could plus have plus past participle. She may have gotten lost. I will present two situations. We want you to come up with the best explanation. Number one, your best friend is in a terrible mood today. Number two, your brother or sister is short of money again. All right, let's go back. And find out what this is. And hold it here. Okay, so these past models with a degree of certainty, right? If it's almost certain, you could say must have, must not have turned. If it's not possible, she couldn't or she could not have been. If it is possible, she may or you guys could say she might have, may or might, or you guys could say could. And so the examples are, she must have left already. She must not have turned on her cell phone. She couldn't have been at home. She may have gotten I'm sorry, she may have forgotten the time. She might not have remembered the time. Her car could have broken down. And so these are the examples that you see. Must have or must not. Couldn't have or could have. May or might. And these are models that we use. Let me see, okay. And then you move along through the video. 
and we're going to come to the explanation, right? And then the formula, subject plus may, might, or could, plus half, plus, plus the past participle. So here we start off with she may have gotten lost. And that's how we have the past models with a degree of certainty. And then the last portion was, what could you guys use? So the example is, your best friend is in a terrible mood today. What do you guys think could have happened? What can we use? He might have lost his wallet again. He might, okay, okay. Well, the first one was the girl. She was, she was in a bad mood. You know what? I think that if I lose my wallet, I would be in a terrible mood, especially because, you know, there's so much money in my wallet all the time. Nada, no hay nada. Documents. Nada. Documents, I think. Yeah, right. Okay. My best friend. So your best friend is in a terrible mood today. We could say he may have lost he may have lost or he may have forgotten his wallet. He may have forgotten his wallet. Okay. All right. We could use that. What else can we say? Why is this person in a bad mood? Me, teacher. Your best friend is in a terrible mood today. Why? Maybe my best friend, uh, he might... A broken hair car. All right. Yeah. We could do it like that. Yeah. Now, if it's a she, right, we say she. If it's a he, well, it, it's a he. Okay. All right. We'll accept that. All right. Next up, next one. Next one was uh, your brother or your sister is short of money again. So this one goes back to we could have used that she may have forgotten her wallet or she may have lost she may have lost her wallet what else can we say what do you guys what do you guys think what else I have bought uh, three pairs of shoes again. You know, that's a, that's a thing. She may have spent all her money on jewelry, on dress again, on dresses or clothes. I think on clothes. Okay. All right. We could we could use that. Uh, let me see, Raf. Can I link and say she may have. She may have, instead of saying she might have. Mm, well, the thing is that might, I mean, you could say it. She may have lost her wallet. She may have. Well, the, the thing is. May have. Yeah, the may the may have. So if you wanted to shorten that, it would have to be like this. And I don't... Teacher, yes. I have a question. Yes, Maricela. Um, are there a rule about uh, when we use my, might or cool? You know, it, it has to do... Maricela, there's always a rule. There's a rule for everything in the English language. But but I want you to know that there's always a rule to to beat the first rule. So, for example, if you guys see a rule that says don't use this, 
there's going to be a rule that says use it, but from time to time. Now, what you are saying is I want to use might and I want to use may, correct? Yes. Okay. Cool. Oh, okay. Well, or could. Let me see. Let me write it down here so that we have a list. So the, the real question is, Maricela, when should I use might? When should I use may? And when can I use could? Yes. Okay. So now you have to look at the sentence structure and you have to look at what is it that you want to say. The level, the level of how sure the possibility is. Okay. Now, could, could, you see how, you know how here is being used like her car could have broken down? That will be like a 75%. There we go, right? So the level of certainty is much higher with could. Okay. Okay. And Must as the, will be the 100%. Yeah, well, yes. It's almost 100% certain you could say that it's a must. Yes, you can look at it that way. Yes, I, I like that. Thank you, Max. So the level of certainty, right? If the possibility is higher, then we start to use could. Then with might and then may is the least level of certain. So if we were looking at percentages, we'll use we'll give we'll give May a high percentage because it's it's still being used and there's only three, right? So we're gonna use 40% for May, we're gonna use 60 for might, and then could is going to be 75%. So it all depends on how certain you think something is. And that's how you use it. Okay, teacher. Thank you. All right. All right, Marisela. But, but Marisela, remember, you don't necessarily have to use might all the time. You can use may or you could use could. It, 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 you know, you could throw it out there and it will sound okay. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. All right. So that is the models video and we're moving forward to the knowledge check. Ooh. So this one goes back a little bit, right? And it puts us to work into what are the possibilities? What do you guys think happened, right? And so the teacher's in a terrible mood today. Akiva, Elhane, Jane is in a terrible mood today. He may have gotten a raise. Mm. If I get a raise at work, if you guys get a raise at work, would you be in a bad mood? Definitely no. I don't Definitely think. no. It doesn't matter how small it is. Um, there was one year where I was working where I received a five cent raise, five cents. And somebody told me, are you mad because you got a five cent raise? And I said, no, those five cents I didn't have before. So I'm actually very, very happy that I now have five cents more. Se nota el sarcasmo, ¿verdad? Super contento con esos cinco centavos. Ooh, sarcasm. We're going to talk about that in the future as well. So happy with the five. Como es, jefa? I'm so happy. Thank you for the five cents. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. She must not have gotten enough sleep. Mm -hmm. What happens when you don't get enough sleep? Do you get into a terrible mood? Yes, it's possible. It's possible. Yes. But don't you feel a little bit different? Like you could be grouchy, but you also feel tired. I think tired is the most. I would say when somebody says, I don't get in a terrible mood, I usually just are kind of depressed like the whole day. I feel weird. I don't know. All right, but we can keep it. We can keep it and see. Maybe, right? He might not have done his work on time. Would that put me in a terrible mood? 
Mm, not necessary. Not, right? You don't care. Nobody cares, right? <clears throat> All right. So that one, that one, I don't think we're going to. Okay. She could have had a fight with her boyfriend. Ah. Well, 100%, I think. That one sounds, yeah, right? That one sounds like, does it, do, do you guys get put in a bad mood when you have a fight with your significant other? <clears throat> Like right before you go to work, you have a fight with your husband, with your wife. How does that impact you and your attitude at work? It's the most common mood in the person. All right. All right. Okay. All right. So that one sounds... All right. Let's look at the next one. She must have spent too much last month. Mm, no. 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 I don't get it. I spend everything and then you're broke for 15 days. But you're still not in a terrible mood because you bought yourself... You know, the stuff? I don't know. All right. I don't think it's that. Okay. He couldn't have heard good news. <clears throat> he couldn't have heard good news. But it doesn't no. talk about... No. I think it's the boyfriend, Fiat. What do you guys think? That one sounds like it's like the most... Yes. I let's leave that one. Let's leave that one. Let's leave that one. Okay. All right. So let's try. Help me out. Guys, help me out with number two. Brian got a call and looked worried. He couldn't have heard good news. Brian got a call and looked worried. And so we are going to choose. Okay. Well, this one makes a lot of sense, right? Because he heard. He was listening over the phone and somebody told him something. Okay. And are you guys sure that none of the other ones fit the description? Yes, the last one. Just the last one. Okay, we'll leave that one. F. Okay. El teacher. Ah, el teacher looks very happy today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He might have gotten a raise. Oh, he yes. might. Esos cinco, centavos, esos cinco centavos no se gastan solos. <laughs> he may have gotten a raise. All right. Maura. Couldn't keep her eyes open. Oh my God. Number two. Number two. She must not have gotten enough sleep. She must not have gotten enough sleep. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Jeff yes. was fired from his job. He might not he have done his work on time. Oh, my goodness. He didn't care, right? Yeah, oh, who cares? I'm going to go drink. It's Friday. All right. It's Thursday. I'm going to go drink. All right. I'm gone. Wednesday. Oh, it's ladies night. I'm leaving. I'm going to go drink. Forget the work. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. Poor Jeff, man. Party animal. Okay. My cousin is short of money again. What do you guys think? She must have spent too much last month. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have any friends like that? That have, they spend all their money and then they tell you, hey, préstame dos bolas para comer, es que fíjate que me gasté todo el piso. <laughs> and of course, we're good friends, right? And we say, yeah, te, lo, ya te invito a comer, yeah. don't worry about it. Yeah, that's what I do. Te invito a comer, venite, venite, vamos a comer. Don't worry about it, I'll treat you. Y como dice el dicho, profe, eh, si, no eres, si no tienes un amigo así, tú eres el amigo. Yeah, there we go, there we go. <laughs> como es, do you guys have any friends like that? No, 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 I don't have any friends like that. Mm. All right, all right, here we go, here we go. How did we do? Oh, we got it. That's it, we got them all. Well done, everybody, well done. All right, so there it is, guys. In case you guys haven't done section 3.4, number one, she could have had a fight with her boyfriend. Number two, he couldn't have heard good news. Number three, he may have gotten a raise. Number four, Mara couldn't keep her eyes open. Uh, she must not have gotten enough sleep. Number five, he might not have done his work on time. That's why he got <laughs> fired. And number six, she must have spent too much last month. All right. All right. We're moving forward, guys. 
and okay. we're going to 3.5 past models for giving opinion and hypotheticals all right all right here you go guys this is the video and playing oh sorry study past models for opinions and advice hi welcome we will now study past models for opinions and advice don't go as we are sure this is going to be useful for you past models for opinions and advice giving opinions you should have called her on the phone she shouldn't have kept your notes this long giving advice you could have been more understanding i would have borrowed someone else's notes i wouldn't have lent them to her giving opinions when giving opinions we may use should have or shouldn't have i will give you two sentences you should have called her. Molly shouldn't have kept your notes. In the example, you should have called her. Molly is giving an opinion. She thinks Michi was wrong to send emails. Molly shouldn't have kept your notes. Michi is giving an opinion. She thinks Molly was wrong to keep the notes. This is the rule. Subject plus should not plus have plus participle. When giving advice, we may use would have or could have. I will explain the meaning of would have like this. I wouldn't have sent so many messages. Molly is imagining this hypothetical situation happening to her and saying she would have done things differently. This is the situation. There has been a misunderstanding about you at work with a workmate. Type in an opinion as well as an advice using past models. For opinions and advice. All right, going back. So, in both cases, guys, there is a rule, and I think it's a rule here in El Salvador or in the United States. If someone does not ask, does not ask for your opinion, don't give it, don't share it, right? And I think that that's, it's, it's, it's for us, it's for everybody. Now, let me tell you something about opinions. Have you guys ever gone well, I'm pretty sure you guys have. It's not a question of whether you have or have not. The question is when. When you guys go shopping for shoes, ladies, uh, gentlemen. A lot of you, time, teacher. Indeed, uh, I need to go right now. Don't worry. Don't worry, Max. Don't worry. You can. Shopping for shoes. So what happens? You tell the person or you ask the seller, what is your opinion on the shoes? And they tell you that they look nice. Oh, they look nice on you. But you always say, no, I don't like these. So why <laughs> did you ask for the opinion? Why do we ask? Why do we ask? If we don't really care, remember, we don't care about other people's opinions, but we still ask. We want to have that third party. We want to hear about that. So we always say, what do you think about these? Even though we don't really care, because if I like the pants or if I like the shirt, it doesn't matter what my friend says, I'm still going to buy it. So unless people ask you for an opinion, try not to give it. And that is also here in El Salvador or in the United States, okay? People don't like the opinions when they are given without being asked for. Now, who gives advice? Let's talk about who gives advice. Or when do you give advice? Well, if you have a really close friend, 
really <laughs> close friend, you are welcome to give advice. If you are an older brother, if you are a tenured person at work, if you are a supervisor at work, if you are a teacher, uh, you can give advice. If you are a doctor, if you are an expert, you can give advice. Or if somebody asks you for it, you can give advice. Other than that, try not to give it because people will usually get upset. Now, giving an opinion, we are talking about it in the sense of somebody already asking you for it, right? And of course, if somebody's asking you for it, go ahead and do it. And when you do it, you should do it this way. You should have called her on the phone. What do you think I should have done? Oh my goodness, you should have called her on the phone. She shouldn't have kept your notes this long. What do you think? Oh, I think that she shouldn't have kept your notes this long. Right, but they're asking you first. What do you advise I should have done? Oh, you could have been more understanding. What do you think I should have done? You know, they're asking you for advice. And then in those cases, if they are asking you, you can both give the opinions and you can give advices. You can actually give opinion and advice and it will work. If they asked you for it, all right? Okay, so the second portion is giving opinions, right? You could either say should have or shouldn't have. Uh, the example of Molly and then giving advice, would have or could have is what you need to use. And then, you know, the last portion, that's pretty much that's pretty much it for the video. And then I think we completed and then you have the section. Remember that there's a section for discussion where you guys can write down the stuff. So make sure you guys do that. And we get to the knowledge check. Oh, I think we were having problems with this one. I think we were using the what's up for this one. Did anybody see the what's up? I think everybody, I think, I think in the WhatsApp group, we were able to, to kind of see a couple of these things. All right, knowledge check 3.7, real quick. I invited, well, no, let's see the instructions. Complete the conversation using past models with the verbs that have been given. For example, dress. You may use could have, would have, should have, or it's negatives. Do not need to type everything, only the past models with the verbs in the correct. Okay. Only the past models with the verbs. Okay. I invited my boyfriend over to meet my parents, but he arrived wearing torn jeans. He looks so messy. Well, he, and then blank, neatly. What can we put? Who remembers or who has the what's up? Well, he, what can we put here? Who had the rest? Good. Have a dress. Have a dress. Neatly. El nitido, well, neatly. A ver, let's try it out. Let me see if it lets me go. Oh, did no. I miss something? Was that me? It could be, let's check the spelling. Chudin, chudin. Well, let me see. You don't have to write the, the, the well. I don't have to write the well? No, no. I think it's not necessary to put the, 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 so, the word well. So, how about only could have dressed? Only could have dressed. It's not necessary to put me. Let's let's erase everything. Okay. Let's check it out. Could have dressed. 
And yeah, you guys got it. That's it. Okay. All right. And then so it continues, right? I blank ask is the word him to wear something nicer. So what do we need to put here? I will ask. And I would no, only, would, would, ask, would, only ask, would ask. Would, would ask. have asked. Would have asked. Yes. Would have asked. All right. Only. All right. And then let's go up to number two. John borrowed my car and dented it. When he returned it, he didn't even say anything about it. He should have told. Would have told. Should have told. Should have told. Okay. All right. Let's leave it like that. Well, I blank not lend it to him in the first place. He's a terrible driver. Wouldn't have lent. I wouldn't have lent. Yes. Lent? Lent yes, it to him? Lent. Okay. Yes, lent. lent is correct. Lent is correct, lent. okay. Okay. I am exhausted. Let's go to number three. I am exhausted. Mary came over and stayed until 2 a.m. She blank so late. Shouldn't have stayed. She shouldn't have stayed. Shouldn't have stayed. Shouldn't have stayed. Okay. Sounds all right. And then we final one for Tom invited me to play, but I ended up paying for, wait, Tom invited me to a play, but I ended up paying for us both. I blank not pay for him. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have pay, paid. I wouldn't have paid. Paid. All right. And then the last one, B, he blank not invite you if he was short of money. Shouldn't have invited. Shouldn't have. Shouldn't. No, please say yes, that's okay. Shouldn't have like that. Invited. 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 All right. Oh, did I miss one? Oh, yeah, we missed one. Uh, let's go back a little bit here. So number three, B, you blank start yawning. Maybe she would have gotten the hint. What can we use? She shouldn't have stayed so late. Maybe you sh maybe you could have no. Have started. Maybe you should have started. But in this in this uh, exercise, you have to add the yawning word. Okay, you should have started yawning like that. All right. So this one gives gave us a little bit of problems. Let's see. Let's see what we have. Ooh. Whoa! There we go, guys. All right. That is knowledge check 3.7 for those of you guys who haven't done it it's in the what's up uh somebody sent a screenshot of it completely so ojo con eso verdad teamwork teamwork all right ladies and gentlemen um beginning tomorrow we're, we're gonna start doing uh hopefully we can start doing uh the breakout rooms and some role plays by ourselves 
or like in teams. Hopefully we, we get around to it. I also want to introduce the live worksheets again and maybe some uh, PowerPoint presentations. We're going to try. Uh, if anything, we're going to try to do maybe one of the items and then platform work and then kind of move ahead from there. Please remember platform, right? As much as you guys can and try to complete as much as you can. And if you need help, uh, please let us know in WhatsApp. All right, everybody. Okay. I'm going to give you guys five minutes back. Thank you guys for coming in. Please, uh, please forget all the bad stuff and remember all the good stuff. Okay. Have a good night, everybody. See Thank you guys. You. Bye. Happy Bye. Monday. Bye. Descansen Bye. mucho. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.